So let's start with the CNR Citation Award. Um, this is our external recognition award. This is something that we created because we have members of the university community that aren't professors or students or graduate students or staff um, who have just made extraordinary contributions to us. And those could be in, in a variety of ways. And if you look over the past winners, you see that many of them uh, have contributed in more than one way, but expertise, uh, advocacy, outreach, support for the college in pursuing its objectives, um, its programs. These are people that we're, we're deeply indebted to and help us out of the goodness of their heart and their love for Berkeley. And this year's winner is no exception to that characterization. And I'm going to ask Joe Napoli to come up and introduce this year's winner and say a few words about her. So um, it's really a pleasure and an honor to introduce Lee Chu, the 2011 winner of the Citation Award. Uh, let me give you a little background. Lee was a student here. She earned a, a degree in biochemistry on this campus and then became very enlightened and came over to nutrition and got her master's degree in nutrition. Lee uh, was one of the most generous donors to the renovation of Morgan Hall. And without her donation, the project would not have been possible. It, she really made the project possible. And after that, she donated to establish a new endowed chair in NST. And so Lee, um, NST and CNR are extremely grateful. I hope you realize how, what an impact you have had on us. I can tell you that we all do. So would you please come up? I'm not going to make a speech. We had many good nominations to just recognize the outstanding and noteworthy service by one of our staff members. And I'm going to call upon uh, Steve Rusin to speak for the people that nominated this year's winner. While I'm trying to get this on, let me talk about Denise. So Denise Schickness, who's sitting over here, um, she has worked for me for 15 years. She's worked for us for 15 years. 15 years. Uh, she got her PhD here. She arrived here fresh and young and all of that. And when she was looking for a job after getting her PhD, she knocked on my door. And it was probably the best thing that could have happened. What she does is a remarkable thing. She, she continues year after year after year to interact with students, interact with graduate students, interact with postdocs who are most problematic uh, users, and the occasional <laughs> the occasional professor who wanders by and she interacts with them as well. Not, there's, there's really not much more that I can say other than the fact that, that without her, let me put it this way, she is one of the main reasons that the facility, that our, my facility, has the reputation that it has, that, that we really have, we continue to have clients, we continue to do research and get people coming, coming through. Uh, without her, Perhaps it'd be just grumpy me, and that wouldn't actually work so well. So anyway, I'd like to thank Denise, Denise Schickness, for staff. hardly seems worth clipping it on for just saying thank you. I, I just wanted to say thank you. I'm really honored and touched to be nominated and to have won the award. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. And um, I know that there are a lot of amazing uh, staff people in CNR and a lot of people deserve this award. So again, thank you for choosing me. And I, I wanted to say that it I couldn't even begin to do my job if it wasn't for all the other amazing staff people who have really um, worked so hard, especially in the past couple of years. Thank you. So that brings us to our last award, which is career achievement. So that should be last in the sequence, right? In the span of a career. Um, 
And when we choose our Career Achievement Award winners here, we're looking for distinguished service in education, distinguished service as a scholar. Um, and that's the norm around here. So when we say distinguished, we really mean distinguished. Um, we also want service. So we need people that are a member of the university community and take that responsibility clearly, uh, very seriously. So I'm going to call up uh, to introduce and say a few words about this year's winner, uh, Andy Jackson. And Andy, Mike's yours. So I'm very pleased to uh, say a few words about Steve. Uh, those of you who uh, uh, have been here for any period of time know that Steve has been one of the leaders in the college and elsewhere in the university. He's provided extensive service to uh, the, uh, uh, to, to the uh, research communities and to the academic communities outside of the university. So uh, his uh, teaching activities are, are very strong. He's uh, uh, won the CNR Teaching Award previously. He uh, teaches molecular environmental biology, which is a really valuable course. And I can tell you, I, I, I see Steve spending enormous amounts of time time that most other professors will never give to their students. Uh, in terms of his research, uh, Steve's research has always been very high profile and very high fly. From the time Steve was a graduate student, he discovered that bacteria have proteins on their surface, certain of them, that nucleate ice formation. And this provided a, a, a very nice thesis at the University of Wisconsin in plant pathology. And then he came here right away, I believe in 1977, right? And, and started a, a program that instantly got international attention. So he proceeded to begin to initiate um, the uh, uh, use of ice nucleation minus bacteria to control frost. And uh, this uh, uh, essentially ignited a firestone storm, I think. And because of his activities, he was involved and in, instrumental in, in the rules and regulations for use of recombinant organisms, for use of recombinant organisms and their release in the environment. So, Steve, thank you very much for everything you've done. You've helped our department an enormous amount, and I've enjoyed uh, my association with you since the day I've been here. And you know that I talk to you every day as I come in and steal nuts from your office. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you, Andy. All those nice words. Somehow I think we all deserve uh, uh, medal somehow, but... When uh, Keith called me here a while back to uh, tell me the good news, three things came to my mind right off the bat. One was, cool. Uh, the second was, I must really be an old fart now because well, my old fart gets career awards. But, and the third that came up right after all those was, I was really glad he wasn't asked for some more uh, help. Uh, you know, what's some more assignments for, for something to do? But it really has been an easy place to be successful here at Berkeley in California. Uh, as, as Andy mentioned, I, I, I think of myself as a plant pathologist, really, primarily. I've kind of morphed into more of a microbial ecologist over the years, partly because plant pathology has disappeared on campus, and I'll mention that again. But uh, to the other extent, I, I, I grew up in a farm, and I, and I, I saw plant disease problems and so on from an early age, and I kind of appreciated the, the need for applied research. And so as an undergraduate, I had a real interest in microbiology and plant biology both, and so I split the middle and I went to be, become a plant pathologist. And it's really been great to do plant pathology here at California because it's a big state. We have all these really cool crops that we grow. We have all these great problems. And so I've worked on a number of different uh, systems over the years, almonds and pears and apples and grapes and a whole bunch of different things. So it's really been an, an easy place to go. And, and as Andy mentioned, we had this rough patch kind of in the middle with all this work with the transgenic releases that we've done. We've done four different transgenic releases of microorganisms and plants in California in the years that I've been here. And you can't do it alone. And I guess I was quite fortunate early on, it was in the mid-80s when we did our first recombinant bacteria that turned out to be the first in the world, that this was really ugly. And it, it, it took a lot of 
institutional resources. They had lawyers and public affair officers. There were just dozens and dozens of people that made this possible. I wasn't going to be able to do it myself. It cost somebody a lot of money. And at the time, the institution had a lot of money. And they were able to put it up and willing to put it up for this kind of research. And so we wouldn't have been talking about these ice minus research if, if they hadn't done that, because it was really quite a commitment on their part. And I don't know, most of you don't think much about cooperative extension, but a lot of my work over the years has involved cooperative extension personnel, because I work on applied problems, and I've worked in a number of different commodities, and so I work with dozens of different farm advisors, they're called in California, they're cooperative extension, UC employees that work in the counties, and they make my research possible. And so it's really been quite interesting and rewarding to work with these many county-based people, but it's also been, um, a lot of feedback. I've gotten a lot of inspiration, interesting problems that I learned about from going out to all these farms. Not to the cool places that Tom Bruns works on, but you know, to Marysville and other places in the Central Valleys where my work took me. But I learned a lot about microbiology and diseases and so on that, that came back to the lab to become very well running. Now, um, I was also very much blessed by having a colleague early in my career that was really instrumental, and that was Nick Panopoulos. Many of you might remember Nick. He retired early in one of the early ways of the retirement. Nick was one of the very first people to really bring molecular tools to microbiology, plant pathology, and I was very fortunate to have Nick as an early colleague, and we collaborated a lot in early days, and he got me started in a good direction. And Using those molecular tools early, I was ahead of the game in many respects, and it really paid off in many respects. So I owe a lot of my career to people like Nick Panopoulos, who very early on got me going. I complain about my teaching. I like teaching a lot, but I always have taught things that I don't know anything about. So I've had to learn a lot about <laughs> plant disease epidemiology and other things, classical microbial ecology, which I'm not. But it's really been very rewarding because as I got into it, I, I learned about things that I think I could have contributed to. And so early on, I did a lot of interesting work on epidemiology that I'm sure I would have never even tried to approach if I hadn't you know, been forced to think about it because of my teaching. Uh, there have been a lot of changes since I came here. It's been 34 years since I got my degree and came straight here. I came to an illustrious department of plant pathology, which doesn't exist anymore. There's still a few of us pathologists around. But to many respects, my transition to PMB was a, a, a very good one. There was kind of a, a short dark period when I was within ESPM, when ESPM was first forming and was kind of in its formative, ugly stages. And after a short while, I was able to escape to PMB, where I now consider home. And it was very good in many respects, because um, I got access to many more and many better graduate students and postdocs because I was in PMB. The two different graduate programs that our department administers are both excellent sources of super students. And I've been very fortunate to have had some of the very best students and postdocs over the years that have made all this possible. And like I say, a lot of it has come via PMB because of the bigger program and the bigger visibility of PMB. So once again, I've, I've really enjoyed working with my colleagues. I've had some really great colleagues. I was counting up the other day, and it took two hands to count the various faculty members in my departments that I've co-published with. And various programs and projects that have kind of come up because they were down the hall and we would talk. So again, it's been very great to have had such good, uh, good colleagues. Once again, uh, thanks for the honor, and uh, thanks again. Um, I'd just like to thank the staff that put together our event. You know, these events don't happen. The, the refreshments don't descend as manna from heaven. The, the rooms don't get booked and the emails don't go out uh, by spontaneous generation. Uh, Catherine uh, Baldwin and Adrian Hank and Lois Hoffler and our photographer, Shoei, um, thanks all for, for putting this together. And thanks for the rest of you for coming to celebrate the success of some of our most outstanding people. Uh, we've got plenty of refreshments. Uh, enjoy some, and I think the temperature on the porch uh, with the shade is just about ideal right now. So congratulations to all of our winners.